All right, so there's a number of things involving the Tesla frunk and aging that we should talk about. First of all, here's the microwave box. This is the bit that, uh, you know, the people with the fancy all-wheel drives don't have. And then there's the mat, and underneath that is the carpet. Now, why am I showing you this? Well, because I want to show you a couple of the long-term issues. So, obviously, do that. We're going to look in there. So first you pull up the carpet, pull out those four cargo net holders. There's the net. And then you work your way around with the 10 millimeters. Uh, and you can just pull these two side pieces loose. They're quite loose. And then you can get the box out. Now, having said that, this is where your tow hook is. It's underneath that carpet. So if you ever need to put it in there, that's where it's kept. It is a threaded reverse, as I understand. I have not had to use mine. So let's talk about a couple of the things we find in the frunk. Or, I guess I should say, behind the frunk. Oh my gosh, a scary wall of things you had better not touch. Especially anything with the orange conduit. Uh, I'm not sure what those are. I'd have to look up on the diagram what those parts are. A nice little Easter egg is the Tesla embossment. This is what's known as the penthouse of the battery pack. It's that little bit that sticks up in front. Now, this is a 85 kilowatt pack, and it has had a warranty uh, repair done on a uh, water ingress in this area over here, which is what I'm going to show you. If you see that bright label, lighting's going to be a challenge on this video, so I apologize. If you see that bright warning label down there, Trying to show it to you? <laughs> it's kind of hard. There you go. And you see those bolts? You can see they're all slathered in sealant and stuff. Uh, underneath that is the main fuse, and that gets water ingress, uh, ingress into it fairly regularly on the old packs. There is a stainless one available from some aftermarket people. This is a replacement from when mine leaked a few years ago. They dried it out, put that back in, said it was good to go. So this is still the original battery pack on this nine-year-old car. Uh, this is much better, much better sealed than the original was. I've seen some really horrific rusty plates there, and it's no wonder that they leak when you see that. I am going to clean that off since I'm here anyway, and maybe put like a, a thin layer of uh, some kind of sealant on top of what's already there, just because it's convenient. You'll also notice, this isn't really a problem, but just worth pointing out, I guess, in case somebody thinks it's a problem, but I don't think it is. There's a added metal plate here on the front of the pack. You can see on both corners, it's getting a little bit of spray off the road. It comes through the same gaps in the, in the chassis there where you would look at your battery sticker. Uh, but the actual seal along the pack is good, and that's what's important, really but I will probably throw something on there. This is the steering shaft. And this coupling was replaced oh, probably a year ago because the old one rusted. So you will see um, online, people will talk about this linkage. It's really just that little bit there. See, it's only about, if I had to guess, it's maybe a foot long. You could probably replace that yourself without too much trouble. Um, this is the easy way to get to it, but you can see uh, it's already showing some signs of rust, so I'm going to throw some grease on there and try and hold that at bay. If your original one, primarily the original ones that are the problem, this universal joint here in the middle will get uh, bound up a little bit, so when you turn the wheel it won't be smooth from lock to lock. In fact, it may lock in, or kind of like catch in a couple different locations. If you have that, this is probably the easiest way to get to it. I mean, you can see I'm just sitting in the frunk, and it is right there. So it's super easy to get to this way. It's very difficult to get to through the fender, which is what I saw somebody else try to do. So I would recommend just going in here, uh, throwing some grease in there, and trying to exercise it and see if you can get, uh, get around that. If I could find a boot to cover that with, I may do that, like a split CV boot or something like that, just to keep the spray out of the actual joint. We'll see, because I have to go to the hardware store 
uh, later today anyway. So that's something else you can do while you're back in here. But on to the most important one. All right, if we look at these two scary boxes on the firewall, you'll see there's a tube here that comes down and runs over the battery pack. It's very easy to get to through this area. And here's what the problem is. Let's see if I can light it and actually show you, but it might be hard. All right, so that is the air conditioning condensation line. So when your air conditioning is running, water comes out of that and it dribbles onto this cross beam here. Now, in my case, I'm kind of fortunate. Uh, I thought maybe they'd replace this when they did the battery reseal, but I opened this up to see if they did and they did not. In my case, this little clip um, has like an adhesive bottom and apparently it didn't stick, but you can see where it was supposed to stick. It was supposed to stick over there. So it's supposed to be like way over like this and going square onto that beam. But what happens is just as mine happened to turn this way for whatever reason, and instead it's been dribbling down through this gap, other people have had this uh, condensation tube either cut short entirely, um, I don't know why, but they would be dribbling right on top of the penthouse there, uh, which is very bad because it's steel, it will rust. Um, or this, um, yeah, that part's steel, I believe. Or, even worse, this line would be, for whatever reason, draining like this, or hitting this beam and dribbling uh, over there onto that front seam of the battery pack. And when it did that, or does that, it can cause those screws to rust, because they're steel, and can cause that seam to degrade, and then you've got road spray and the condensation, especially in a hotter climate, going straight into your battery pack. And that's where all the controls are. Um, oops. Or I should say that's where a lot of the controls are, as well as some of the modules there in the front of the pack. So that's a very bad thing, and I've heard of a number of people having to get new batteries because of this boneheaded design. So in my case, what my plan to do is, um, well, A, I'm going to look for a thing for the steering rack while I'm there, or a steering joint. But if you get three-quarter inch tubing from AutoZone, or similar, whatever, um, it's called heater hose will fit right over this and you can clamp it on and at my auto zone anyway it is I think 250 a foot they sell it by the foot so for five dollars I can run that line from where it currently ends along that beam and over here you well, I can't show you easily but all right if you look you can see there's a gap in the chassis there, which goes right where the front suspension is. It's kind of in the middle of the frame. Can I see it there? So that's my garage floor. So my plan is to take, you know, this 18 inches or so of hose and run it through there, and it'll dribble down right behind the uh, front tire. And then tracing back, so you see where that is, there's that cross beam. And there's the drain. So that is pretty short run and then hook it over that hole and drop it down vertically. So that is the plan. Uh, the cedar hose is pretty flexible. You can also buy them preformed with like 90 degree turns and stuff in them, but I don't think that's necessary. But anyway, so that's what you, when you hear about this this issue, that's what that issue is. And it's, again, it was just dumb luck that my adhesive, which you know should have been sticking there, uh, right there, uh, came loose and resulted in the hose resting there and doing no damage to the pack. So I'm going to fix that. All right, so I put some silicone indoor-outdoor caulk over that cover, which you can see there is that milky stuff. It'll dry clear and uh, that should help seal that door. No, I'm not worried about the battery warranty because it ran out a year ago. 
As for the steering joint, uh, I don't have, obviously, my cover yet, but I've put on some grease. I use the same grease I use on the brakes. It's also a siliceramic, and uh, it sticks on really well. So this should be fine in, in a semi-protected environment. Um, while we're at it, I just want you to see some of the hose clamps on this coolant pump, for example, how things are aging. Definitely things to um, keep an eye on. Uh, none of these seem like especially brittle, but for these other critical areas, I am going to use, or just kind of give a light coating of uh, this spray, which I will show you here. It's this stuff. Um, I've been using this, let's see, where is it actually on? It has a number, I forget what it's called, but it's like CR4086 or something crazy like that. But basically, oh, is it that? I don't know, can you see that? Uh, anyway, it basically dries as like a, a kind of a waxy, kind of a waxy film. Uh, it's cleaned off with brake cleaner, cleans off real easy when you need it to. It works really good on areas that don't get direct road spray. So you wouldn't put this like on uh, metal suspension components or something like that. But uh, it does work really well for like these areas that are, that are fairly protected. So the downside is it's very stinky. So I'm going to try and use it very sparingly, and I'm going to leave myself the option of having a boot of some kind put over that, just in case. So, um, yeah, and then I'll put the drain hose in when I get it. All right, I was going to buy two feet of this hose, but it turns out that I could get two feet at $250 each, which was $5, or I could get uh, six feet, <laughs> the whole the whole thing for 650. So for a buck 50 more, I've got enough to do uh, more of these for my friends if they need it. They don't have to buy chunks of it. So that's the stuff. Anyway, so I already cut it. I'm just going to use a hose clamp. That should be sufficient. And uh, we'll jam it on the end and put it underneath this other connection here, which will also sort of tether it in place. And that should be it. So let me do that. All right, that does go in there, but it's pretty snug. So rather than slit this hose, I'm going to use a little uh, petroleum jelly on the end to make that slide in there easier. All right, so I took that clip off because I'm not using it. Uh, I did do a, I don't have a zip tie handy, so I just did a couple layers of this Gorilla Tape, which works really well. So here's the drain line coming off here. It goes under here maintaining that slope and there's another wrap of that there and i ended up using that larger hole after all so i will have to uh, go down there and make sure that that's not sticking out any place weird but it's kind of going straight down it's kind of bent that direction so it should be all right and there uh, it's fully routed away from the battery just for a little time sake in case it's needed uh, i will put this on here just in case, I don't know, just in case they ever had to mount it and they'd be like, well, where's the clip? I'm like, well, it's right there. So, uh, yeah, so that's where it goes. And that should solve that problem. And uh, this this is drying nicely. This stuff uh, I put on this wax kind of makes it a little bit yellowish. So it actually looks worse <laughs> after you've treated it, but it should seal out uh, and stop that from going any further. So, and yeah. I think we're ready to put things back together now. Okay, I've removed the wheel to see where this is coming out. And uh, yeah, I, I had thought about running it through that smaller hole I'd showed, but that would have put it right in this little gap here where this bolt is. And that means that anytime that battery pack, my sticker is missing, but anytime that battery pack would ever be moved for some reason, that line would get all tangled up in that process. So I moved it to the larger gap, which I had showed you before. And uh, so it's coming out here now. Uh, it's a little long, I ran it a little long, so I'm gonna cut it. But the real thing I'm gonna do next is um, I need to make sure that this doesn't move around. So I'm gonna drill two small holes in the shroud with my handy dandy my drill. And then we'll just zip tie, we'll zip tie it right here and then cut it off right even with this and uh, it's out of the way of everything there's no clearance issues with anything there and that'll help 
keep it located uh, outside the shroud. So I'm going to do that now. All right, back in here, and uh, I did back that up with a zip tie to make sure that hose keeps that elevation because we want that to be a constant downslope. And I also have it there to maintain the elevation. And then, of course, it goes down through that hole. And I'm ready to put that all back together. Uh, I did have to drill up from below. I could not drill down through this shroud because of the... Uh, well, there's a lot of a lot of stuff in the way, but you can see. Oh my gosh, there's just so much stuff in the way. Well, anyway, there. So you can see that zip tied, nice and firm. It's not in the way of anything else, and it is hanging just a tad down. I suppose I could trim that more, but frankly, there's a lot lower uh, stuff. And I don't think that is going to be much of a range hit, but I will at least know. Uh, well, you know, like I said, I could always trim a little bit more off that later if I really don't incline. But what I don't want to happen is for it to like bounce up on a bumpy road and end up on top of this shroud and it's just <laughs> splattering everywhere. The, the goal is for it to be directed. So I think that's probably going to work just fine. And now I can put it all back together. Well, I figure you really don't need to see me put this all back together because I kind of told you how I put it, took it apart. But yeah, basically wheel on, jack down. Then we're going to put in that frunk box, 10 millimeter screws, making sure that the ones with the screw on post go where the cargo net is. And then put in the carpet, put in the uh, rubber mat, put in the cargo net. And then that trim piece on the top there wraps around the beam on top and we're good to go. So that's how you work your way around the condensation problem, which has been ruining uh, a number of these batteries. And uh, now at least I know where the puddle on my floor will be. Thanks for watching.